Hello everyone, welcome back. You're watching Empyrean Galactic Survival episode 204. I'm Ignatius and today is kind of a big day for the USS Discovery hybrid. We're basically finishing off the last of the major structural work. So the saucer section is basically done. There's some more details that we have to do. The main hull section is in the same boat. It's basically done um, thinking in terms of the exteriors. There's a little bit more that we have to do. And now the nacelles are reaching that point as well. In the last episode, we did a little bit of the underside work that we had to do on the nacelles. Uh, and I thought to myself that I would just go in between episodes and finish it off. We did one side of each nacelle. I just had to do the other side. And then I realized that there's going to be a certain amount of culling and trimming of the overlap between the stuff we did in the last episode and the stuff that we're going to be doing in this episode. So I just left it. And that means that once we get this stuff done in this episode, I just have to go back between episodes and finish off that other side, clean things up a little bit, and then the nacelles will be about 95% done with the exterior structure, which is uh, kind of a big deal on a build this size to be uh, in that spot where we've got uh, the overwhelming majority of the vessel complete. And it's just a matter of going around and, um, you know, putting in those last minute details, things that were uh, part of the ship that I knew eventually we were going to have to add sooner or later, but just set aside because they weren't part of the main structure. Um, maybe a few modifications here and there to what we've already done just to kind of quite often I find that the, uh, a lot of the modifications that I do after the fact are just to kind of even some profiles out a little bit where they, they don't quite flow as well as they could but overall uh we're we're there we're basically in a position where we can show what the completed ship uh is going to look like mostly so uh this part here was called out in the diagram that we had in the drawings as sort of this part that extended out kind of on its own and then at the back end it's got sort of like an opening almost like a big vent and it, it kind of um First of all, makes you wonder uh, what kind of ship would need a vent of that size. Um, but at the same time, it you know even if it's purely aesthetic, that's totally okay as well because it does add something to the aesthetic of the ship. Again, by the time we were done the last episode, looking at the nacelles, they they had they'd already taken on sort of this big beefy kind of muscle car look to them. If you can make that transition from spaceship to muscle car. Uh, and this detail that we're putting on the underside now further supports that kind of appearance. So I was kind of uh, a little bit apprehensive about getting started on it because it's another one of those things that has a lot of uh, compound curves and things happening at odd angles intersecting. But by the time we got everything taken care of uh, and had a chance to look at it it came together fairly well all things considered again voxel universe not necessarily lending itself to these kinds of shapes and these kinds of designs but we managed to pull it off and get it done so i'm pretty happy about that now the things that we still have to do for example the um if you look at the obviously you won't be able to look at the saucer section right now but in terms of just thinking about that there's currently no way to get from the inner ring of the saucer section to the outer ring it's not going to take much to provide the means of doing that the design of the ship already basically calls for it there's uh, four structural elements that connect the uh, inner ring and the outer ring the rings can spin independently of one another but they still have those four elements that sort of spin around in between so you have this realistic looking structural component that would allow you to literally walk between one ring and the next so that's fairly important it's not a big job to put it in but the way that i'm looking at it it might turn into a slightly bigger job uh just because uh it would there's two ways i can go about it i can just put in those think of them as little hallways four little hallways uh, extending from the inner ring to the outer ring and I could just do it like that or I could do it a little bit more closely matching what's actually happening on the ship and that would involve putting a bit of a ridge around the um, outer circumference of the inner ring 
and the inner um, circumference of the outer rings, just kind of a, a ridge pushing in on each of those things. And then those hallways, that's sort of where you can imagine that they would connect in those ridges. It would take a little bit of extra time. I've already got the space there. I don't have to worry about expanding anything or making major changes to some of the more complex uh, structural things that we had in place. But it would take a little while just because uh, they're fairly large. But I think in terms of the time that we've spent already, it might be worth the time to just go ahead and, and do that, make that happen. We'll see. The next episode will tell the tale. Um, there's also some relatively minor um, details going on on the top and underside of the outer ring uh, that won't take long. They don't involve reworking much of anything. In fact, they're basically just sitting on top of the existing structure. Um, but when a person looks at um, the actual ship, it's, it is kind of a prominent thing that you see on those um, saucer section components. And again, that's something else that we'll probably be able to get on in the next uh, episode. I'm talking about what we're doing in the next episode because there's not a whole lot I can tell you about what we're doing here. I've already kind of described what we're doing and now we're just in the process of putting it in place. Uh, this is sort of like that uh, rear section where the vent would be that I was talking about. Only in this case I've closed it off. There's no actual opening on the back end. I don't even know if there's an opening on the actual ship. All I do know for sure is that it's got sort of this horseshoe kind of shape. Uh, and then we've just got the other profiles and stuff that we're trying to line up with it. So um, this is just kind of building itself at this point. I've got the one side done and now I'm uh, duplicating it over onto the other side. The, um, the main body of the ship, because of the nature of, you know, this whole build, and the changes that we had to make in order to accommodate the size restrictions uh, imposed by the game. There are a number of things that I want to put on the main hull just to add more detail and give it uh, more visual interest, but I get to make those up as I go along because it's not like I'm following something specific where I'm trying to duplicate it. And the nacelles themselves, aside from those light strips that I put in that aren't even really a part of the actual design, um, there's some uh, details in the uh, Bizarre collectors on the front of the nacelles. There's basically some uh, bumps, <laughs> very large bumps on the front of the nacelles that are uh, glowing different colors. I think there are two red and one blue or maybe one red and two blue, something like that. So there's an opportunity to put in some relatively minor structural things in the front of the ship and light them up in interesting ways. So we're all for that. And when we look at the grand scheme of things, and we've got those details that we just talked about on the saucer section taken care of, we've got the Bassard collectors on the front of the nacelles taken care of, all that's left is whatever we end up doing on the interior, which will be, um, like I say, there's going to be some aspects to the interior that we will be doing. Uh, I'll probably be going through the entire ship. I'm not going to make you guys watch it, uh, but go through the entire ship and smooth off the inside. Uh, so that it's a little bit more finished and anyone who decides that they want to mess around with the blueprints Would have the opportunity to go through and finish it But they would have certain things that they wouldn't have to do because I took care of it for them already That's kind of the goal with that And then we can uh, fill it all in with the, the necessary bits And see if the thing will actually move At this point, I'm not sure I haven't uh, tried to even rotate the ship since uh, the last time I tipped it to try and get better lighting, which turned out to be kind of um, ironic that we did that because it was almost two or three episodes after we did that uh, that we started working on the nacelles and in particular the underside of the nacelles where there was no lighting uh, to be benefited from. So we're almost there. We're about to cross the finish line and it's kind of exciting. Again, after all this time, um, the ship is still absolutely massive. It's not going to be getting any smaller. I'm, I'm curious to see what the final numbers are going to look like when we look at the stats. How many blocks go into it, how much it weighs, um, how much power it uses, how many RCS units we have to have on board either to make it move the way that we want it to or uh, until we hit some kind of diminishing returns that basically says no matter how much more you add, it's not going to make a difference to how quickly the ship can maneuver. And I haven't put a single thruster on this ship. 
Um, I, I don't think I, I've had a thruster on it ever, actually, come to think of it. I've uh, basically just started building it in space. And that was... Uh, no, we didn't. We, we started building it uh, down on the planet, and then we had to change things around a little bit, and we brought it out in space as a part of that. So we, we didn't need any thrusters when it was um, down on the planet, and we haven't really needed anything out here in space. So you can see we're cleaning it up, basically done. We just have that other side of the underside that we um, didn't do in the last episode. But the work on that, like I say, it's already done. We just have to duplicate it, clean up the other nacelle, and then uh, do a little bit of tidying up, getting all the overlap and stuff like that taken care of. So we're going to do a little bit of texturing, a little bit of painting, so that you can see a little bit better how some of the things line up. And then in the next episode... Uh, the nacelles should basically be uh, the exterior, aside from the bizarre collectors, they should be structurally complete. And we'll be working on the saucer section and kind of working out the details there to get that to the point where we can say that the, uh, the outside is done. So if you want to be notified about the next and future episodes in this and other series, the easiest way to do that, of course, is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information section below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.